Bruce here with an episode of Chord Play, and this is the Chords of Guns N' Roses. And I've had a lot of requests for Slash and the music of GNR, so I figured it was high time I made this episode of Chord Play. We're going to be talking about Slash, we're going to talk about Izzy, and we're not really going to move too far into Guns N' Roses, you know, discography. We're really just going to hit, you know, some riffs and ideas from Appetite and the Illusion albums, you know, no offense to the other releases, you know, the Chinese Democracy and the Spaghetti Incident, Lies, and, you know, some of those albums, but classic Guns N' Roses from the late 80s and early 90s. It's just magical. I vividly remember when I was a kid, they used to show concerts from the Ritz on MTV. And there are two that I vividly and distinctly remember, uh, White Lion and Guns N' Roses. And I guess there were some other groups, you know, the Colt and Iggy Pop and um, Great White, you know, bands like that performed on that same show. But I definitely remember White Lion, you know, Vito came out and just blew my mind. I think I recorded it, you know, like on VHS tape. And I watched that concert over and over and over, you know, hundreds of times. And then it seemed like right around the same time, I also caught Guns N' Roses on there. And it was just completely different than White Lion. You know, there's White Lion kind of performing, you know, perfectly and permed and precise. And then you've got Guns N' Roses, they took the stage, and they were sweaty and tattooed and intoxicated. And I remember as a kid, I didn't really understand. I thought, what is going on? I think, I think Slash is drunk, you know, and I was so confused. And by the time they played Paradise City, you know, the crowd went into riot mode. You know, uh, Axel stage dove into the crowd, and Slash is laying on his back, you know, playing a guitar solo, just completely out of it. And when I saw that, I thought, this is so weird. You know, this is really strange. And, um, you know, I was learning how crazy and wild rock and roll can actually be. And uh, here's an image I made with 10 famous, you know, Guns N' Roses wild moments. And there are hundreds of them. But these are 10 that kind of make me laugh, or I just think it's so strange and unusual, where it's like, what happened? You know, when you read the headline of the article, and it's just like, what? But that's rock and roll. With the opening, that was Mr. Brownstone from Appetite, and I think that's my favorite Guns N' Roses song, for sure. And I've always dug this riff. It's simple. Um, it's based around a couple power chords, but then Slash and or Izzy, I'm not really sure who wrote the riff. I think it's Slash. But, uh, you know, the, the power chords are kind of dressed up with this busy single note riff. Uh, something like this. So right there you can see we're kind of playing around with like an E blues or an E blues hybrid. Because we're going from the minor third to the major third right there. I just think that's kind of crafty the way it's moving from an E power chord to an A too. It's simple, but it's really cool. And then right there, just move down this open position, you know, kind of kind of a modified uh, E minor pentatonic. And then you repeat it again. And the second time through it, just grab a D power chord, an A power chord, a single B right there on the second fret on the A, and then that third fret on the low E string. And it's just this busy, kind of twisting and turning riff, which is really cool. Next we have the reprise of the pre-chorus from Night Train, right after the guitar solo, and it's this part. And right there you can see this is kind of functioning as a little piece of A7, and that's going to move to a D over A. Moves down to a C right there, like a partial D to a partial C. And then you're basically moving to this. That's a little bit of A minor to G major. To an F power chord right there. 
move up to a G power chord right here. Right there's a partial C to a partial G and you're moving your way back down to that A. So it's like an A, a partial G, or implied G, back to that A. And then it ends with this whole step bend, you know, from A up to B. And it's kind of like a slight pinch. Something like that. Next is the bridge from It's So Easy, and this has some very basic chords, but I really like the guitar part, and it's this kind of rolling, arpeggiated uh, idea like this. And I really like guitar parts like that, where there are a lot of kind of mutual or shared notes. You know, like there's a D over F sharp shared with a G right there. And you're kind of sharing that open D string between those two chords. And then right here, this is moving to a B5 flat 13, or you could think of that as a flat 6 too, I guess. But then that open G string is going to be shared with this A7 right here. So I like that, you know, there's four chords, but two of them kind of share an open string and the other two share an open string. So you kind of hear that, your, your ear definitely pick up, picks up on that shared or mutual note. And that's very effective, you know, even though it's a very simple guitar part, but it catches your attention, you know, it draws the listener in. And that's what every songwriter should be doing with their parts, you know, try to attract attention. Um, like this. Cool guitar part, you know, and very simple. For another guitar part built around basic chords, but it's also very effective, uh, look at the intro from my Michelle from Appetite, and you've got this series of, you know, arpeggiated chords, but it creates this really dreamy and kind of moody intro part. I've always liked it. Uh, something like this. And right there you can see we're doing an A over C sharp in the beginning. Is a little piece. It's actually C major 13, and this appeared in the Robin Trower uh, chord play, you know, episode recently. And then a little piece of B7 right here, and then end up on F sharp minor. And you put all that together, and you've got the intro from My Michelle. You can see I've switched to an acoustic guitar, and we're going to look at the song Civil War from uh, Use Your Illusion 2. And I know Guns N' Roses definitely has this legacy of hard rocking, you know, sweaty, electric, you know, uh, music. But they also had an acoustic side, and you got to think of songs like Patience, you know, almost the entire Lies album was kind of an unplugged album. And you got to think of the time frame, too. That was kind of early. That was before Unplugged really became a thing. Um... But with this song, it's interesting because Slash is playing this kind of picked, you know, uh, series of lower chords. And then Izzy eventually kind of chimes in with a harmonized part, you know, outlining the chords with a higher part. So we're going to look at both of those guitar parts, which is kind of neat. And when you put them together, you have this huge kind of dreamlike sound. Something like this. So here's the lower part. <laughs> You can see we're doing a little a piece of E minor, and we're just kind of picking through it. And right there, you can see they keep adding that open A to the second fret, you know, that B note, that little hammer on in there. And then you move.
move to G and do almost the same thing, but in G major. <laughs> second time through it, you're actually going to move down to a D over F sharp right there. And then you kind of repeat that whole part again. So right there. Izzy's kind of playing eventually this higher part. That's pretty cool because there's like a little piece of E minor right there. And you're just moving down, it's basically like a G6. And then this is really interesting. So you can think of that a couple different ways. Um, you could think of that as a G6 um, and with an F sharp on the bass right there. But you have all the necessary notes there for a little piece of G major 7. But you've got that open high E string in there too. So a G6 over F sharp, you could think of it that way. Um, so there's E minor, little piece of G, and then that uh, G6 over F sharp. The last example comes from Use Your Illusion 1. This is the song The Garden, and we're still tuned down a half step, but we're also in drop D. And this is kind of a fan favorite song. You know, your average person on the street probably hasn't even heard this song before. But it has this kind of Led Zeppelin acoustic laid back vibe to it. Alice Cooper randomly uh, sharing vocal uh, duties on this song. I always thought that was kind of interesting. Like, Alice Cooper, you know, in the studio with Guns N' Roses? What? But uh, something like this. <laughs> this little single note, you know, kind of open string based riff. Like that. And that moves to D7. And then you're going to modify that riff and grab that F note. Uh, the only note that changed is just that last note. Like that. Then that's going to move down here to this, uh, what, D6. So you've got this little D7 to D6 progression. And then the third time, it's going to move to this, and that's a D9 flat 13. And just move back to D7 again, and then repeat that whole cycle. for anything kind of Zeppelin-esque or, you know, influenced by Zeppelin. Love Led Zeppelin. So that's, you know, definitely my cup of tea where it's like, yeah, that's cool. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Guns N' Roses. And I've definitely had a lot of requests for Slash. I've had requests for, you know, Guns N' Roses music. And uh, there's just something cool about this band. I mean, you go back and you listen to their music and you compare it to other music, you know, that was around at that time. And it's just a striking contrast, you know, where it doesn't sound like 80s you know, hard rock and hair metal. It definitely didn't sound like 90s alternative and grunge. You know, it had this very different sound. It literally sounded like the Sunset Strip, you know, but like the CD kind of dirty part, you know, not the, not the part that tourists visit, the part the locals actually hang out, you know, like the dirty kind of alleys and bars and, 
the streets, you know, and some of the not quite so glamorous, you know, side of LA. And that's literally Guns N' Roses. They just kind of rose right out of the gutter and took over the world, you know, and they're still respected. They're still active and doing things. You know, Axel did a great job, you know, jumping in for uh, Brian Johnson, you know, like a few years ago with ACDC. Of course, Slash, you know, has worked with Miles Kennedy and Velvet Revolver and solo albums and tons of stuff. So these guys are legends for sure. And there's a reason, you know, they came out swinging and they're still swinging, you know, which is awesome. So uh, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.